And hello, welcome to Open, the show that's opening the Bronx and the rest of the world right to you. I am Darren Jaime. Today, we're updating you on what's happening in and around our borough and New York City. Coming up, we'll explore a recently launched degree program designed to equip students with three distinct educational paths within the healthcare industry. Following that, we're going to delve into a program opening avenues for high school students in underserved communities. Later on, we'll offer insights into selecting the perfect gifts and gadgets for the upcoming holiday season. And afterwards, we'll guide you through the process of navigating and choosing the most suitable health insurance plan. Finally, we'll discuss the anticipated decrease in donations this holiday season and explore some of the reasons behind it. So stay tuned because all this and much more is heading your way. Right now, we're officially open. And hello, everyone. I am Darren Hyme, and you are now watching Open, a live program bringing the Bronx and New York City straight to you. We also want to welcome our viewers to the Manhattan Neighborhood Network as Open is being broadcast simultaneously on MNN channels. You can stay connected to us on all of our social media platforms at Bronxnet TV. Some things have been going on throughout this past week. We'll take you through it with some Bronx updates. We start off with community news. We are always in the community. Emirates Health Royal Care have inaugurated a cutting edge healthcare hub that's designed with the primary focus on the needs of both the client and the caregiver. Our Bronx Net reporter, Kevin Aline, has a story. A new healthcare hub launches in the Bronx. Emirates Health, a home and specialized health care service provider, opened the doors of their transformative hub to clients and caregivers in Southern Boulevard. Done over here was Josh Jack, our, our directors, our leaders. They've really uh, championed this vision for many years. Their goal was to open up a hub in the Bronx, a community first home health aid, but not only for the patients, also for the caregivers, right? Everybody involved with the population in the Bronx, across New York City, everywhere a building that covers many different types of care. Josh Klein, CEO and founder of Emmer's Health and Royal Care Companies, explains the origin of the longtime goal to open a multi-layered care facility in the Bronx. When I started in healthcare, the Bronx uh, people that are in the healthcare space welcomed me, and I told myself years ago that if I'm going to do a sophisticated building and really showcase the world that what we can do in the home care space, I'm going to do it right here in the Bronx. Emirates Connect expands care through its technological branch, providing clients with unique ways to build community using a live and interactive TV studio. Here we get to actually talk to the people and we actually get to see them interact, have fun. We do games, we do health news, uh, we do just talk, you know, and it's just it's really terrific. It's just a whole new way to look at, I guess, television. In an effort to show appreciation to caregivers, the organization launched an initiative titled You at Perks. Through their perk system, caregivers can access mental health support, rejuvenating spas, and nutrition education. It's a hard job, right? It's a busy job, going into people's houses, taking care of them, many times long hours. We wanted a place for them as well. Home health aides are underpaid, undervalued. They do so much. We want to have good outcomes. It's incumbent on us to first take care of the workforce so they can give back. And that's the only way, and that's what this building represents. This brand new facility stands as a beacon of growth within the community, and the founder hopes that other boroughs follow their lead. To learn more about this organization, visit the link below. Reporting for BronxNet, Kibben Aline. Well, congratulations to Royal Care, and thank you, Kibben. In other news, New Roots Community Farm celebrates its 10th anniversary 
with some free food, music, and DJ, and tours of the farm. Our Bronx Star reporter, Kyrie Moody, has details. It's the 10th anniversary of New Roots Community Farm here on Grand Concourse, and community members are excited. They are engaging with the farm and the natural herbs of the earth, and this was the goal to get more community members informed and educated about the earth. Before the pandemic, we did have community engagement because we had a, a, a very strong membership base. Um, the New Roots Community Farm is part of the International Rescue Committee. It's part of their program. So we did have community engagement, um, and we did plant a variety of crops, including culturally relevant crops for our refugees, asylees, and mostly immigrant population, um, and herbs as well. But you're right, during the pandemic, everything just spiked. During and even now after the pandemic, people have turned to a more natural way of living meaning that community members are taking full advantage of natural resources from the earth in their cooking, water intake, and even their medicine. Medicine is food and food is medicine, right? Before we had modern pharma pharmacies and modern types of medicines, you got your health and wellness from the food that you ate. In fact, I was just speaking to a lovely community member who recognized an herb and picked it asked the garden manager what it was, and sure enough, it was a tea that her mother would make. The Bronx, if you didn't know, has the most green spaces in New York City, from Katona Park to Pelham Bay Park to Starlight Park and many more. Growing up in, in Midtown Manhattan, I did not have access to the same kinds of spaces and just access to space that I got to have this privilege here being in the Bronx, especially in the South Bronx, with all the history that I got to also learn about the space, about food access in particular. Kiana Mickey is the executive director of the New York City's Mayor's Office of Urban Agriculture. She tells us more. So the Mayor's Office of Urban Agriculture is coming on our first year anniversary. It's an office that prioritizes how to lead the city's efforts in increasing the access to and the production of locally grown food, minimizing the contribution to climate crisis, and spurring green econ um, economic opportunity in the city. To find out more about New Roots Community Farm, visit their website at farmersmarketcoalition.org. Reporting for BronxNet, Kyrie Moody. Great work, Kyrie. Thank you. That's all the time we have for our Bronx updates. We are taking a quick break. And guess what? We've got more open when we return. Only 57% of New York City high school students are college ready by their senior year. Fifty-five percent of high school graduates either have no plans to attend college or are uncertain that they will ever attend. Thirty-four percent of young adults don't go to college because they can't afford it. Discover what's possible. BronxNet's education programs, internships, and opportunities help engage and inspire Bronx youth and beyond to pursue their passions. Be a part of the BronxNet family. Whether you're interested in our shows, joining a class, or donating to support our mission, visit BronxNet.org to learn more. In an innovative cross-campus collaboration, Bronx Community College is set to debut a groundbreaking associate in health sciences degree this spring. The program incorporates valuable certification options, I should say certification options, and specialized advisement tailored to guide students in defining their academic and career trajectories. And joining me now is the program coordinator of the health sciences program and also the Deputy Chair of the Health, Physical Education, and Recreation Department at Bronx Community College. We've got Stacia Reader, and uh, thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, no problem. Uh, an exciting time, and so uh, share with us a little bit about it here. Uh, yeah, so this is a really great program for students, especially those students who are interested in health careers, uh, in particular those students who are interested in nursing. So we have uh, many students every year who want to go into nursing, uh, that they may struggle with um, 
making it through the program. So we wanted to create a uh, program that's more streamlined for them for going into a nursing program. So we have three different options in the program. One is more of a clinical track for those interested in a career in nursing, and they can easily transfer out to a nursing program or another type of clinical degree like a medical lab technician, for example. Uh, then we also have a care coordination track, which is for those students who are interested in maybe becoming uh, community health workers or patient navigators, uh, helping uh, patients navigate the healthcare system. And then finally, we also have a track for um, health administration. So working um, in the administrative part of healthcare. Well, when you look at these tracks that are available, talk to me about the advancement in the life of a student. How important and uh, how valuable is this for students to be able to have this opportunity? Oh, it's, it's really important. Uh, healthcare is the largest employer in the Bronx, so this will be a great opportunity for students to be able to get their foot in healthcare. Uh, they can go and take certifications. So we're offering certifications that are embedded in the program. So for example, CPR, um, um, EKG, for example, uh, uh, other certifications. Uh, so it's just a great opportunity for them to either get their associate's degree and use the certificates we have in the program or move on to a four-year college and beyond. Yeah. And so what are you finding right now as far as students are concerned? Is there a great buzz at, now that this is uh, being offered to them? Yes, they are so excited about the program. Uh, there's already over 60 students enrolled in the program, and we haven't even started it. It's starting in the spring, so students can enroll in it, enroll in it now. Um, and I've had a lot of students in my classes say we wish we had this program a few years ago when we started at Bronx Community College. So there's a lot of excitement for it. And there's some flexibility when it comes to making these course choices. Yes, so one of the things we built in was a ton of flexibility so students can pick and choose uh, the courses they need to take to get into the bachelor's degree program that they're going into. Uh, so they don't, they'll, all of their uh, classes will be covered by um, TAP or other government funding. Asked if they were taking a course that was not a part of their uh, career or degree track, they may have to pay extra out of pocket, so all of that has gone away. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit more about, uh, for a few seconds, about the different programs. Uh, the care coordination option, uh, give us that. Yes. So care coordination, so we met with employers to develop this program, and one of the big things they said is care coordination is really growing in healthcare. Our healthcare system is complicated, and it's hard to navigate, and they need people from the community uh, to work with patients um, and kind of guide them through the healthcare process. So this uh, program trains students for that. There's lots of entry level jobs, uh, working within the healthcare system, working with primary care doctors, uh, doing outreach with patients, visiting their homes. Uh, and then there's also the side within the healthcare system, navigating the hospital system. So students with this can work as community health workers, patient navigators, uh, they could also go on to get a bachelor's degree in uh, social work or human services. You've got a health administration option, and uh, we talked a little bit out about that earlier, but uh, let's go a little bit more in depth there. So, you know, when you talk about uh, population health and quality improvement, what exactly is that? Uh, so, we, that's a, that's a, that's a complicated question. Uh, we want to improve the health of the population in the Bronx. So, uh, when it comes to health administration is working in, it's, re it's really working, there's so much administrative work um, in healthcare and it's, and it's training students to do that type of work. Uh, and they can go on and get a bachelor's degree in the health services administration at Lehman College. Uh, and there are so many jobs in health administration and such great career opportunities, uh, working in um, health centers or working on, in the hospital system. So again, if somebody's coming to BCC in the spring, they have the opportunity to be able to take this. And then what about somebody who might be per se, um, you know, a continuing student? Absolutely, a continuing student can definitely switch their major and go into the health sciences major. We've, we, I think a lot of the students that we have right now, they're enrolled of the 60 students, they may have changed their major. So if you're a, you haven't acquired that many credits, maybe a, a first year student, or you've done a semester at BCC, it's still a great opportunity to switch into this major, absolutely. Yeah, and it's more for you than just uh, overseeing the department, it's almost like a labor of love here, huh? Yes, I, were, I got, we worked really hard to get this going. We got funding from an outside 
funder, funder and we spend a lot of time investigating different certificates, meeting with employers. Uh, we collaborated with uh, different departments all over campus. So the business administration department, our business services department is a part of the health administration degree. Um, biology department helped us out with the clinical track. Uh, and then uh, human services department helped us out uh, with the care coordination. So definitely a labor of love. And yeah. we're very excited to launch it. If we have potential students out there that are watching right now and this really like what's their appetite, what's the process for them right now? To go on campus and enroll. So um, meet with admissions and enroll in our college. And we have wonderful advisors. Uh, fac our faculty are amazing. Um, it's a really great opportunity for students. And uh, BCC is, is such a, a great and friendly place for students. And we would love to have you uh, join our campus and enroll in the program. Yeah, it's got to be a great time for you having this new program. Students who are coming in on tw in 2024 in the spring have the opportunity to go ahead. And then we also have continuing education students. If you're continuing, then you have the opportunity to also uh, change your major and uh, join this program. And so, uh, Stasia, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. All righty. Well, we want to let you know if you want more information, go ahead. Visit the website, bcc.cuny.edu. Find out all about it and uh, get the details. All right, don't go anywhere. We got more open coming up right after this. I remember when the Bronx did not really have a media outlet properly representing the people of the Bronx. BronxNet provides for the community by being a community where people can be empowered to share their voices. We are in a really great place technologically. We've got all the resources that we need to be effective. Whether it's through cameras, storytelling, editing, we have provided those services for 30 years. BronxNet's mission is to be a voice for the community. To educate to inform and to inspire. And you can be a part of it. We've built studios for you. And we are back. The Youth Construct Initiative is an after-school program tailored for New York City high school students that are in underserved communities. It offers focused vocational training and construction administration, enabling students to enter the workforce promptly or pursue higher education and construction-related fields. Now, joining me now is the executive director of Youth Constructs, Derek Perguson, and uh, glad to have him on. He's sharing with us, and uh, Derek is a native of uh, Harlem, New York, and then also went on to the Bronx, to uh, St. No, Cardo Hayes High School. Uh, I'm not going to hold it against you. I'm a native of Harlem. I went to Rice, but uh, we're going to be we're going to be friendly for the for the for the for the nature of this discourse. Good to see you, man. It's uh, good to see you. Good to be here, man. Thank you for having me, man. Hey, uh, thank you. And real, uh, real serious business, though. Uh, you're having the opportunity to talk to and really engage young people. And I really am glad to have the opportunity to talk to you about this because when we talk about construction, uh, you're offering young people an opportunity to really get into the construction business early. And for somebody that's in it, we know already that uh, seeing particularly communities of color uh, involved in construction isn't always what we see out on the outside. That's absolutely right. Um, and also, and not only do we get them uh, information and training in the construction fields of architecture, construction, engineering, and real estate development, we're teaching them the back office jobs. We're teaching them how to be project managers, site supervisors, how to read blueprints, how to assess architectural renderings. So and you and I know, once you get in the office and do the paperwork, now we're economically empowering you to start your own business anywhere you go. Those those skills and paperwork and, and things of that nature are transferable to other things. So we're really setting the kids up uh, to be successful uh, after an eight month program, uh, readily employable. So it, I feel great to be a part of this uh, organization. When we talk about getting young people involved in that, what's the response that you're getting as you're introducing them to this? Because there is one sector of people, and of course I'm not that, uh, that feels as though this is something that they're not going to really want to engage in. What are you finding? That's funny you said that. Um, with today's you know, climate, with social media, kids see a lot more things than they should be uh, exposed to. So uh, they see the, the glitz, the glamour, the, the bling, and they want these things at an early age. And um, a lot of them don't see college as the route. 
Um, so we allowed them and we allowed them to come to our program to be readily employable. 11th and 12th graders, they come one day a week, uh, Tuesday for two and a half hours. They come Thursday for two and a half hours on Zoom and they travel from all over the borough. So when you ask this question, we have over 30 schools that's in, enrolled in our program that sends us children. And we have at least one uh, student from each borough. Now we uh, right now only have the capacity due to funding um, to accept 30 students per cohort. So we had 90 students that we had to say, not this year, let's, let's try it again next year and hopefully the year after. We're trying to extend the age limit from just 11th and 12th grade to that demographic that is very impactful, which is 16 to 24 maybe even 25. So we're trying to do a lot of things here in which everybody's support, we probably can get there. But this is a unique program in, in and of itself. The business model is uncompared to in the market. I mean, and let's talk straight. We know that educationally, sometimes our young people decide, listen, I don't want to go the educational route of going to college or, you know, take the step of going to that university and making it. But I do know what I want to do. Uh, I want to engage in something that, with these skills. And for yourself, an opportunity to introduce that to them at an early age. Talk to me about what happens after they complete the program. I'm glad you asked that. That was a great question. Um, this is our fourth cohort. The previous three, which I wasn't here for, but the previous three, we still have one graduate from the first cohort who has went into the uh, work field, who, who our partners, to shout out to our partners, Turner Construction, who provides paid internships at the end of the graduation for the uh, young um, young people to get economically empowered. And then they pick them up to employ them. And he's even in the union. So he even comes back every class on Tuesday, volunteer on his own time, comes after a hard day's work, looking the part. And he he is making an impact. We have other young ladies that um, are interns, and, we, and we, I think they're giving a stipend. And they are doing excellent work first from the second, first and second cohort that come back and, and is joining this program. And to your point of college, we have, we have, I know we have several students who have went through the program, said, I want to learn more about engineering and went to college to learn more about this type of field, this type of discipline. So the, the possibilities are endless when each graduate is going to have three certifications. They're going to have their 30 hour OSHA. They're going to have their site safety training, and they're going to have their notary public, which you know is very valuable in the African American's family. Um, so they all, they're going to have three certifications, knowing that the more certifications they attain, the higher their income, knowing that they explored fields of study that are lucrative, and they can start their own business, look into going to different disciplines. So it's a great program, big, great business model, and you will love our founder, Alexis Maswine. She's the founder, and she's the president of Bottom Line Construction and Development, 100% minority-owned business. Give her credit for the Apollo Victoria, next to the Apollo Theater, 125th Street, the, the, the Victoria Theater that she just had. Yeah, I, I want to say that, you know, when we look at the program itself and say, listen, here you are not just engaging people in the area of architecture, construction, and engineering and development. You're really doing something with the advancement of lives, right? Because uh, we're preparing people and you're letting people have what the word I want to use is exposure. Talk to me mm -hmm. about how much exposure is making the difference in the lives of these young people. Exposure is very important. Um, our staff at Youth Construct, of very dynamic people. I just mentioned Alexis McSween, who has a great story in and of herself um, to make it this far to be a very successful businesswoman. And we have Mayola Bolton, uh, who is a founding board member of Youth Construct. Um, and she is a former WNBA player. Um, and, you know, her, her sister Ruthie Bolton is probably more known, but she had her own uh, mark herself. And she runs a very tight shit with the ladies and the students. And, and she does a great job. So we have that leadership within house. And again, we're still building. I'm currently the executive director, but I'm here essentially alone. And, and, and again, the team is there that's in place, but we're still building. So there's opportunity for everyone to be involved to really spread this out the city, throughout the different boroughs, and, and, and ultimately throughout the state and the, the country. Talking about the paid summer internship, though. 
it's it's great, man. We partner with, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for more partners so that we can employ these thirty students. We want to build capacity to do at least a hundred students a year, and and have companies say, okay, I'll I'll take these students and teach them more hands on at the site. So we have our partners like Turner Construction, we have Artemis, um, we have CPC, we have Four uh, D Construction at this point, and there's a few others. But all our partners are pitching in, providing the paying the internship, which pays about four to six to say, um four to six um six thousand uh, dollars for the two to three month uh, uh, internship program they go to after the graduation. So it is is a nice little nest egg to get on your feet, especially for a young person, and it's enough to entice them to get more and to go for more. They're not in the street wasting time; they know how to get more. And once you have the know how, you you, you know better. Yeah, you know better, you do better. That's what we say, right? Better you do better. That's our area. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Well, thank you, Derek. I want to thank you for being with us and sharing. Uh, great, as I said, to see uh, Harlem Homeboy coming back and doing some great things uh, for the community. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. And come to um, youthconstruct.org. Check us out. Thank you very much for having me. Man, you stole my line. I was getting ready to tell the people that. But OK, that's cool. I, I'll, I'll tell them again. How about that? Have to make sure. <laughs> got to make sure. Listen, you got to get. You got to go back to the boss and say, "I told him, I got you, man. I got you. I, I'm gonna hook you up again one more time." So listen, if you want more information, do visit their website at youthconstruct.org. And we encourage you don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more open coming up right after this. This year, Bronx Net Community Television needs your support. For more than 30 years, we've been providing community programming shows education courses, and access to our world-class television studios, a place where Bronx residents can call home. Community leaders and organizations can share their ideas, stories, and passions for what matters to us. We are still going strong, working hard each day, building new studios, creating new jobs, and expanding our digital inclusion opportunities so that your voices can still be heard. Every dollar counts. Donate to BronxNet and keep the momentum going and continue building a better Bronx with BronxNet. And welcome back. Now, if you're looking for gifts this time of year, the best gifts, the gadgets during this holiday season, you know, we get down to the last minute. We start worrying about what are we going to get? Who are we going to get it for? Am I getting my gifts covered? Well, I want to help you out today because we've got you covered. Join us now with his top picks is lifestyle editor, Mike Bako. And uh, Mike, we welcome you to the show and good to have you. And uh, for all of us, we know this time of year is kind of like frenzy. We're trying to get the last minute gifts in order. Uh, but help us out here. What should a person know if they're down to the last minute and trying to figure this out? Okay, so if you're coming down to the last minute and you're trying to find things out or figure out what you want to get for people, you don't have to overthink it. So many people this time of year, what do they want to do? They want to be outdoors. They may want to go to Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. They want to go see the Rockettes. They want to be out at this ice skating rink. But they also want to come back home at the end of that day and watch some Netflix, watch some college football or watch the Knicks. And what you want to do is you want to be cozy. So whether you're indoors or outdoors, one of my go-tos is right here, Bedshore's wearable blanket hoodies. They're the perfect gift for families for enjoying a cozy night at home. Certainly a great way to spend time with your loved ones. Available in multiple sizes, colors, materials, and they even have matching family sets. These hooded blankets keep you and your family snugly and warm. And the super soft Bedshore wearable blanket hoodie has over 4,000 ratings and is available on Bedshore Store on Amazon. Great offering there at this time of year, 50% off at the holidays. And certainly you may be thinking about this for you and your family. We also wanna be thinking about crowd-pleasing stocking stuffers. So let's start with the basics when it comes to that. Duluth's Buck Naked Underwear is an absolute must. They're available for both men and for women. They come in a three-pack set in a limited edition festive pattern set that you see there. Buck Naked is a customer favorite because it's no stink, no pinch, no sweat wear. And the famous underwear has received over 20,000 five-star reviews. And since you need something to layer over your underwear, Duluth Trading's free swinging flannels, you see them there, are an elevated spin 
on an American classic. They're available for men and for women, as well as for kids in 15 different patterns and colors. So there's certainly a match for everyone, no matter what your personal style is. Well, you got us hooked up there. Let me take it from this perspective. A lot of parents right now are struggling simply because they're not technologically relevant. They just don't know. And they know their child wants a gift. They know they want to please their child during this time of year. But yet, it's still technology, it's not there. So walk us through, if I'm a parent, I need to make some wise technological choices. What am I doing? Okay, so if you're a parent, obviously what you're thinking about is, okay, what what do I wanna get my, my child? What are they ready for? What sort of platform are they gonna be playing it on? Are they gonna be on a PC, on an iPad, on a console, anything like that? So you wanna kind of figure out What's the experience level needed for your child to participate in one of these games that you may be thinking about getting for them? Also, is it age appropriate? So now one way to do that, one of the things that I'm gonna be doing with my boys is thinking about what they watch on TV. I really feel comfortable with them watching shows like Bluey and Paw Patrol, but they also want video games this time of year. So. Why not combine the two? Outright Games certainly did that. And we've got Bluey the Game as well as Paw Patrol. So they're two recently released kids' video games, both available now on all consoles and PCs. Let's start with Bluey the Video Game. Kids can become immersed in the world of Bluey in this interactive adventure game that faithfully recreates the iconic locations from the show. You see some of that there. Comes in four-player couch co-op mode, so it's perfect for the entire family. And let's not forget everyone's favorite pups as they've returned in the open world adventure game, Paw Patrol World. Explore Adventure Bay. Every parent knows what that's about. In this two-player couch co-op mode game, it's Outright Games' biggest Paw Patrol game yet. So much fun for the kids, so much fun for the entire family if they want to get together and play. But certainly a game, you don't have to be a big technology buff. You don't have to necessarily worry about uh, violence or too much action. These are both really great games that not only your kids can play, but also the entire family can play. Mike, you talked about being a technology buff, and we know a lot of people are not technology buffs, but when it comes to shopping, they also have this aversion. Don't want to be in the mall. Don't want to have to worry mm -hmm. about these long lines. These are things that so many people think about, but technology is becoming more and more efficient now for uh, parents and uh, also you know, consumers to be able to do their shopping. Yeah, certainly, you're one click away from buying virtually anything. So certainly, if you're on your phone or on your computer and you don't wanna go out to the store or you don't wanna price shop, you could certainly do so much of that online. So even if you're at a very baseline level of technology expertise, you could go on a website and you could sort of figure out what you may want. One of the great advantages of buying things on a website is you could possibly get items that are not in stock in the store. Certainly this time of year, if you go into the Macy's or you go into a mall somewhere, you're not necessarily sure, A, how big of a crowd level you're gonna experience, but also what they have in that store. So certainly going on a website, being able to click and buy small, medium, large, whatever the size is, you could do that and know that it's gonna to come to you at a very specific uh, time period. But when you think about technology, one of the things that I found and what I uh, advise people to do this year is if you're interested in a particular item, find out the brand's website. Oftentimes on the brand's website, you could get a bigger discount than what you would get if you went to an Amazon or one of the other uh, ways to buy it online. So that's one of the things when you think about when it comes to using technology. One of the other things, you wanna be careful with this, but there's also buy now, pay later options that have become increasingly available on a lot of the websites where you're doing purchasing. What that basically means is you put in some financial information, you get approved, and you're able to pay in installments. So it's different ways to use technology this time of year for sure. Yeah, I appreciate the tips because they're really helpful. I think people can really uh, delve and dive in, get the help that they need because this has become more and more complex as the <laughs> years go on. I mean, we think about it before, it used to be very easy. It's very complex. And so uh, when I'm thinking about gift giving, we all are still there. Uh, I don't want to give the same gifts as everybody else does. I want to possibly go out of the box. What do you recommend? Okay, so if you wanna go out of the box and if you've got an outdoor adventure person in your life or even a thrill seeker of any skill level, 
you want to turn to Polaris. They're the global leader in power sports. So they're making outdoor recreational vehicles. Check out a lot of what you're going to see here. Side-by-sides, motor vehicles, ATVs, snowmobiles, slingshots, pontoon boats. They allow people to explore and enjoy the outdoors for both play and for work. And they have this amazing international network of over 220 Polaris outdoor out adventure outfitters. So they have these off, uh, uh, offer these memorable riding experiences. So no matter what your skill level, is you don't even have to have your own a vehicle to do this. And even in New York, you could go to New York ATV tours in Whitehall, New York. So a little bit of a day trip to be able to go out there, but you can experience so many of these great outdoor adventures. So if you're really looking to have that bang of a present or a gift, that's one of the items that you're able to do. So there's certainly things that you need to know about the person. Do they want to do the outdoor thing? Do they want to have this sort of immersive experience? Polaris is great for that, but you have to know the person that you're buying this for. Or if you just want to put them outside of their comfort level, that's one of the things that you're able to do. So it's for the outdoor adventure seeker, for the thrill seeker, but also for someone who's looking to do something that's a little bit outside the box and a great gift idea. You're really thinking about the person if you're doing that. You know what, Mike? I was 30 seconds away from getting a slingshot. I really was. This summer. I was 30 <laughs> seconds away from getting a slingshot. I ended up getting a Can-Am Spider, but that's my story. Uh, but you're absolutely right. Out of the box gifts work tremendously well for some people. Uh, last question before we go. For somebody who needs that information and wants to find out mm -hmm. more information on how to make this a whole lot more easier, what do I do? So you really want to check out any of the websites here. I've got one more item to stay connected. It's Metro by T-Mobile. Here in the New York area, there's a lot of different neighborhood Metro by T-Mobile centers. There's over 6,000 nationwide. But right now, what you want to do is if you want to join Metro by T-Mobile, you're able to do it. Discounted rates if you bring over your number. They have America's largest 5G network offering free phones if you bring over your number. So a lot of great options there. You can check out all these brands and their websites or to my Instagram account, at Mike Bako. Mike, it's been great talking to you. Thanks for the tips and uh, the much-needed advice. I think you made Christmas a little bit easier for somebody on the other side. So thanks a lot. I hope so. Thanks for having me. All righty. Well, now, again, if you want more information, go ahead and visit his uh, Instagram, I should say, at Mike Bako, and there you can get the tips and what you need. We encourage you, don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more Open coming up right after this. Choosing health insurance independently can be overwhelming with factors like plan benefits, tax credits, premiums, and upcoming 2024 plan changes. It is challenging. And to ensure that you're making the right decision, and how do you begin the process of selecting the best in health insurance plan? Well, we want to have a conversation. And joining us now is the co-founder and CEO of Stride Health, Noah Lang. And Noah comes to us to give us the information that we need. And you know, Noah, when we talk about health insurance, the first thing that most people want to do is scratch their head, put their head down on the table, and say, listen, this is not for me. Let's just get it over with. A lot of obstacles. So talk to us about why is choosing health insurance so and such an arduous task for so many people? Thanks for having me. <laughs> and you're right. A lot of folks want to just bury their heads in the sand and move along. Uh, it's hard because it's, uh, you know, healthcare is a different language than we speak every single day. The healthcare system in this country hasn't necessarily made it a lot easier to understand it, but it's also buying insurance, not expecting and understanding what's going to happen in the coming year. It's a pretty complex decision for us to figure out 
the doctors you need and you want to keep, the things that might go wrong this year that you need to go ahead and account for, and even the current prescription drugs or day-to-day -day care that you might need and how much it's going to cost in every health plan. It's pretty tough task, so it's reasonable that it feels hard, uh, but it's a it's terrifying decision to go uninsured and avoid it altogether. So what do I do if I'm out there and I'm saying, listen, I got to choose a plan. I know I have a, I have a, plan, to, uh, a plan that I have to have in place. Um, what are the best things that I should do when factoring the decision and making a plan? Well, first, don't procrastinate. Uh, you have to make a decision by December 15th if you want to be covered for January 1st. So don't wait until the last minute. You'll have a, a lot less help and a lot less options in terms of making a decision. The second thing is look at your whole budget. Don't just look day to day, week to week. Look across the whole year and figure out what you might be able to spend on your health insurance premiums and go consider what might happen this year. If you need preventive health care and you're otherwise young and healthy, uh, perhaps you can go with a higher deductible health plan. Um, if you have specialists that you need to see regularly, you might consider make, paying a higher premium to save on your out-of-pocket expenses throughout the whole year. And if your family takes any prescription medications on a regular basis, you want to go ahead and figure out what those might cost you in every health plan. So don't just compare health plans and make a decision based on what looks like the cheapest plan in terms of health insurance premiums. Go look at your health care needs. Try to figure out what you might spend over the coming year in health care and build yourself a little apples to apples comparison in terms of those health plans and your personal financial or health care needs. Since the pandemic, we know that more and more Americans have uh, opted for becoming self-employed. Entrepreneurship numbers continue to rise. Uh, for those out there that are on the self-employment bandwagon, uh, help them through. Sure, yeah. You know, it's, it's an amazing evolution of how people work today. A lot of people are taking the leap, but one of the scariest things that happens is how am I going to deal with health care? What do I have to think about in terms of my taxes? And how am I going to plan for retirement? Health care is usually one of the biggest blockers to making that leap. So if you've made that choice and you've taken that leap, you're now on your own. There's no employer making that decision for you. But the good news is there's sites like stridehealth.com, my company, to help you through it. And there's a lot of pro tips, and I'll give you one of them today. One is when you earn self-employed, uh, you actually can deduct all of your expenses from your income to see if uh, your, your total income, to see if you qualify for advanced premium tax credits. These were created under the Affordable Care Act to lower the cost of health insurance premiums uh, when you buy insurance on your own. And they can be pretty impactful. So if you live in New York, uh, you can earn up to $100,000 a year and still qualify for a advanced premium tax credit. The way it works is the government pays your health insurance plan that amount you pay the rest of it every single month. A family of four living in New York can make up almost $200,000 and still qualify for a tax credit. So if you're self-employed, take a minute, see if you qualify, and then also do the work because you can deduct self-employed expenses from your income to increase the likelihood of a tax credit. And it can be a pretty dramatic impact. Almost half the people that we covered last year who were self-employed qualified for a nearly free health plan. We are, you, were, you brought the word tax credits, and uh, I want to spend a moment there. A lot of people, if I get a tax credit, I want one. How do I know if I'm qualified for a tax credit? Well, there's a, there's a bunch of options. So uh, I will share. I, I run a company called Stride Health. It's at stridehealth.com. We have a super easy to navigate platform where you just put in your income, and we'll tell you. We'll tell you what you might qualify for. Um, you can go locally to the New York State of Health, uh, and they will do a similar thing to tell you if you qualify uh, for an advanced premium tax credit. What you have to do is you estimate your income for next year, for 2024. It's an estimate. Uh, and so if you get it wrong, it'll, you'll adjust it in April of 2025 when you pay those taxes. Uh, but basically, you just need to estimate your income, and the government will then verify your income once you enroll, and they'll pay your insurance carrier every single month when your premiums are due on your behalf. That's good information right there. So give me a, a little bit about this here, because when I talk about tax credits, uh, obviously we want to make sure that we're maximizing our, our dollar, getting the most for it. Um, looking out and looking, projecting into the future, uh, can we look and expect that more and more that are on that self-employed side can look forward to seeing possibly those tax credits? 
Absolutely. You know, those tax credits were increased in 2021. Uh, the government will look at them again for 2025. So this is a critical year to take advantage of those increased tax credits. Um, we've seen dramatic growth in folks qualifying. Uh, basically, eight to nine out of 10 people should expect to qualify uh, when you look at those tax credits. And these are pretty unique tax credits. You don't have to wait until next year to use them. You can use them right now, enrolling by December 15th for January coverage. Uh, and the government will pay that tax credit in January and in February and in March. You don't have to wait a whole year. Good info there. I want to go back for a second. So many people hear these terms, and I don't want to take for granted that maybe all of our audience does know, but when we hear the word open enrollment, uh, sometimes people are like, Ugh. what does open <laughs> enrollment mean? Define it for somebody that's out there. Uh, and as we say around the block, make it make sense. Sure, sure. There's a lot of terms that don't make a lot of sense in healthcare. There's open <laughs> enrollment, there's HMOs, there's PPOs. I'm happy to break them down for you. Every year, if you buy your own coverage, there's a window. There's a period of the year in which you can get your own health insurance, and then you can't anymore. So uh, for New York, enroll by December 15th to get covered by January 1st. There's a, there's a follow-on window in January where you can still get covered for February 1st. But if you miss that deadline, you have to wait a whole year unless... There's what's called special enrollment. You, you lose a job, you get married, you have a baby. There's a few things that qualify you to get coverage, but otherwise you can't. And so uh, it's a pretty tight window to go get your coverage and get the job done. It's open because you can get covered uh, thanks to the Affordable Care Act, regardless of your age, your gender, your illnesses. Uh, someone can't charge you more, a health plan can't charge you more based on a chronic condition that you're managing Everyone's avail available to do it, uh, and it's open in that very sense, but only for a tight window. All right. Well, we've got a whole lot of information. Noah, thank you so much for being with us. He's the co-founder and CEO of Stride Health. And uh, thank you for making it make sense for us when it comes to open enrollment, because we know a lot of people are out there uh, scratching their heads and struggling, but you just uh, cleared it up for some. As we said, that period actually goes on between now and January the 16th. Noah, thanks much. Thank you for having me. All righty. Now, if you do want more information, visit the website at stridehealth.com and then follow them on social media at Stride Health. We encourage you, don't go anywhere. We are back with more open coming up right after this. We are back. The holiday season is crucial for not-for-profits, generating billions of dollars within a month. However, due to the rise in natural disasters such as earthquakes and fires, Direct Relief reveals that 41% of donors hesitant to give by the end of 2023, having already contributed to er uh, emergency causes earlier this year. Now, joining me now to provide more is the president and CEO of Direct Relief, Thomas Ty, and uh, Thomas, thank you for being with us. This is a time, usually before, uh, where we would talk about anticipation on the part of not-for-profits. But as we get to these months, it's really a time now of hesitation. Right. Well, thank you for having me. Appreciate it very much. And you're right. I think it's a kind of a, a weird time. And it's been a year that was marked by a lot of major events from the fires in Maui to the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria and obviously what's going on in the Middle East. So... I think, you know, when we did a little survey, <clears throat> we found that people were feeling a bit tapped out. And so that's all, for many nonprofits around the country, 
a big percentage of what they receive for the whole year comes between Thanksgiving and, you know, midnight on New Year's Eve uh, as people are trying to do something for either for tax purposes or because that's been the tradition. So, I mean, you never know. You can never bank on it, but um, you do what you can and keep your fingers crossed. But I think you said it well. I think the outs, uh, the context of the moment we're in, there's a lot of distractions. The economic situation is tough for many people. So I guess we'll know on January 1st how things shook out. Yeah, I, I looked at one of the statistics that was uh, given to me, and I found this to be quite amazing, that over the last 20 years, 20 million people have just stopped giving altogether. Right. <clears throat> right. I think with uh, an eye-opener, I think there's been... I don't think Americans are any less generous. There's um, They give in different ways. I think the kind of younger generation tends to um, be more spontaneous, perhaps less planned than the traditional people who would have everything in a ledger and plan carefully their year-end, every expense. And I think it's much more dynamic these days. And so the way people engage with everyone else, including organizations, has really evolved. So for direct relief and many nonprofits, just trying to stay in sync with the people and without whose involvement, it doesn't work at all. I mean, it's really nonprofits are um, voluntary activities for people to participate. It's not mandatory, which is a great thing. So you want to extend that invitation, uh, all groups do, to invite the participation, but be aware of where people are and how you can connect with them. And I think just the way we receive information, communicate with each other has evolved so much. It's always, um, you know, kind of a constant uh, effort to try to say, how do we engage with people who might be interested in what we do? And I think that's with a million and a half charities in the United States, <laughs> it can be just sending more email and bombarding people is probably not a great idea. Calling them on the phone is not a great idea. It's irritating. So I think trying to be visible and communicate for any organization with its supporters or potential supporters is, is very important. When we talk about where we are today. We know that there has been volatility, economic volatility. So many people right now are just really struggling. And when it comes to the area of giving, they want to make sure that they're giving to a charity or a not-for-profit that is really going to do right by them uh, when it comes to taking their gift and maximizing and making the most out of it and going where it says it's going to go, right? So uh, a lot of people out there are shopping when it comes to not-for-profits because there's so many to choose from. How do I give to this organization? How do I give to this organization? Um, and then also the choice of which organization should I be able to factor in my giving? My question will be that, that in itself, how does a person really make the right decision? Because there's so many out there to choose from how do I make the right decision that I'm going in the right direction? That's a great question. And you know, I think the first part of the answer is that no one can tell you what to care about. That's very personal. And some people are deeply passionate about animal welfare or the environment or their church or local school or a sports league. And it directly happens to work on humanitarian health services for people around the world. So you know, I'm biased. I'm close to that. But I recognize that that's the that's wonderful thing about philanthropy. You get to choose what you care about, and no one can tell you that, right? But once you do decide that this is the cause I care about, how can I find an organization, just as you said, that's going to do right with my money make me feel proud? And sort of like there are these shopping, like, you know, I see these TV commercials for Shop with Google. We'll do all the price comparison um, for the same product. There are kind of analogs for nonprofits, and one of them is Charity Navigator, uh, which is an independent organization that basically grades and rates uh, nonprofit organizations how well they're doing with transparency, how efficient they are, what their governance looks like. So it's a an indication of stability and legitimacy. So I think my advice would be once you find what you care about, do a little homework to see, well, which organization is going to do right with my money. And to do that, you can look at Charity Navigator. And this is an independent organization. It just is a kind of consumer guidance for um, potential donors or Charity Watch. These are independent organizations that are kind of like consumers' reports about charities. And I think that's a, a good way to have people feel good if, they're, if they lean in and make a contribution. They should feel good about it. But you, and you feel awful if you hear something later 
that it's a sketchy organization. So it's worth doing a little homework if you're in a position uh, to give and you want to do it. Just try to do it thoughtfully with um, for that cause you care about. Yeah, let's go from being not just the giver now to that organization because we know so many organizations during this time of year, as you said, are really banking on being able to bring it home during the month of December, November, the holidays, right before we get to the end of the year. For organizations, knowing that there's these potential donors out there, we know that uh, donors can get turned off by so many different things. What should an organization do uh, if they're really looking to attract donors uh, during a time like this when we know that this is the heavy giving season? Is there a better formula for donors to actually, or I should say organizations, reach out to potential donors rather than, you know, the, the mass, the mass uh, ways that we see sometimes that can be really uh, overbearing to people? Well, that's probably a multi-billion dollar question. <laughs> I'm not fully prepared. I wish if I knew the answer to that, Darren, I, you know, um, uh, it would be great. But I think my general advice for organizations, and this is what we try to do, is first of all, is just do your job well. Be worth it, right? Um, don't focus, focus on the work that led you to work in an organization. And I think at the end of the day, that's what people want. They want to ensure, uh, ensure that their money goes to people who are committed to the work, not just who are good at marketing. And so I think um, for people, many people aren't in a position to give at all, but that doesn't mean they don't have a voice or a vote. You know, what, one of the things we found is that particularly younger people are keying off of their peers. You know, the, the reputation that's built by someone who knows. So even folks who aren't maybe big donors, they may have a big voice and a lot of people follow them. So I think um, for to look for your supporters, if you have a small organization, but you have a committed folks, they all know people and that's the best reference of anyone. So I think just sending mail, first of all, you can waste a lot of money of your donors just sending mail they're going to throw away. It doesn't make any sense. So I think just step back, um, look at internally what brought you to work there, those things of value um, that right. really make you feel good about going and try to connect with people who are already involved and hope that 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 circle spreads, you know, that, that ripple effect, because it's so, you know, hard to penetrate the public consciousness was, you know, everyone's bombarded with ads and information and uh, it's just a very noisy time. So I think back to the basics of um, those small concentric circles and personal connections is really a, an important thing, even for big organizations. Yeah. You said you didn't have the answer, but I think you gave one. Do the work. <laughs> that's, that's what you said. Do the work. And I think that's, really important because I think so many times the work speaks for people uh, that they don't have to do all these other crazy things that uh, people now become inundated with that turns them off. Uh, it's been great talking to you, Thomas, and I uh, really appreciate the work that you're doing and uh, letting us know what it's like out there. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate the time and good luck to you. Hey, thanks much. I appreciate you. All right, listen, now for more information, visit the website at directrelief.org. Also, their social media at Direct Relief. Well, we've come to the end of our show today. I want to thank all of our guests for joining us, and most of all, you, the viewer, for tuning in. Now, if you missed any part of today's show, you can catch the Recable Cast on Optimum's Channel 67, Verizon Files Channel 2133, or watch us anytime on the web at broxnet.org. Now, if you want a brand new episode of Open, come on back Friday. My girl, Rita Valentine, Miss Cafe Leche herself, will lead us in arts, entertainment, and then some. That about wraps up this episode. I am Darren Jaime telling you to make sure that you keep this channel wide open. Saying take care and God bless.